When working with um, discrete random variables and specifically talking about the mean and standard deviation, the next logical thing to talk about is expected value. And what this is, is what happens in the long run, averaged out over each time. So basically, if you were to take your total wins and divide that by how many times that you played the game, then it would be like having the same outcome each time. The formula for expected value is E equals the sum of the outcome times the probability. That probably looks familiar because it's the same formula that we use for the average of a discrete random variable. So let's go ahead and look at this example below. Assume there's a game where you pay $2 to get into the game and you're going to roll a die, singular for dice, and if you come up with a four on top, then you win, a we win $7. So the question is, what is the expected value? You'll actually sometimes see that like on the back of a lottery ticket. It'll say the expected value or the expected value to play. To do this though, we need to know what our net winnings are, and we've talked about this in the past when we did odds, but basically, even though you're going to win $7, don't forget you have to subtract off the $2 you, play, you paid to play, so you're only netting five new dollars. Okay, so when it comes to our expected value table, it's the same as our discrete variable table, where we start off listing the outcome, the things that can happen. And in our case, you can either win or lose. And we just said your net winnings would be $5. And if a four doesn't come up on the die, then you would be out $2. But we just said you're gonna lose that $2, so we need to make it negative. The $2 must be negative. So now I need to list the probability of winning and losing. The probability of winning would be one-sixth, because remember, one of the six sides of the die is a four, which is a winner, so only one of the six sides wins. That means the other five-sixths of the sides of the die lose. And so according to the expected value formula, I need to multiply those outcomes with their probability to get five-sixths and negative ten-sixths and add that. And keep in mind, remember, since I have the same denominator in both fractions, then I just add the numerators, and 5 and negative 10 is negative 5. But when it comes to expected value, we always want to talk in terms of money, so I would need to convert that to a decimal to say that my expected value is negative 83 cents. Um, and then keep in mind, if you wanted to use the cent symbol, then it goes on the right side and you do not use a decimal. But in both cases, our expected value is negative. Pretty much with most games, it's going to be negative. But, you know, what does this mean? What does negative 83 cents mean? At the end of a lot of rounds of playing this game, your total losses, because it would be losses, is equal to having lost 83 cents every time you played. So if you played a hundred times, you're going to be out $83. You won a couple times, but you lost more than you won, and you'll be out $83. Being out $83 is the same thing as having lost 83 cents every single time. So expected value isn't something that'll really happen. You'll never really lose 83 cents, but it lets you know. So if you had your choice to play a game that loses 83 cents or only loses 20 cents, then you know, pick that game and you either won't lose as much or maybe you have a shot getting out of the game while you're still ahead.